Hello and welcome to another uh, Chess Openings Explained. I'm your host, Jonathan Schrantz. And uh, this is the show where we take viewer submissions from YouTube. So this week, the overwhelmingly popular opening that people wanted to see was the English. Uh, people have been asking for this for a long time, so here it is. Uh, we're going to take a look at it. Um, so we'll just quickly look. We'll put it up here on the board. So the move C4, this is uh, the English opening. It's, you know, it's very popular with our, our grandmaster that's here right now, Yasser Serwan. So maybe you've been watching his videos and you've been looking at, you know, some of his games. And, okay, when you see this move, you typically think of a, a very positional game. Um, but it's such a flexible move. You're not putting a pawn in the center. You're not playing e4. You're not playing d4, at least not immediately. Um, you're, you're instead going for a light squared strategy. You're taking control of d5 early on. <clears throat> okay, so we do have a, a Monday crowd here today, so I'm talking to you at home. You're the, you're the only one in the audience right now. <clears throat> Uh, it's a very flexible opening, which means a lot of people, both, both positional, very solid players, uh, they like to, to play you know, the English. Also really aggressive players. We'll see a game, Nakamura, he usually has a, a typically aggressive style. We'll look at one of his games. And okay, it's, it's a, such an opening where theory isn't the most important thing. It's going to be more about understanding the ideas and the reasons behind certain moves. So it's, it's not really for those people that, that want to memorize theory. So perhaps that's uh, an appeal to you. If you want something you don't need to study, you just need to learn some of the key ideas, then this is the right opening for you. Hey, Michael. <clears throat> and uh, OK, so maybe that also could be a, be a turnoff too. Maybe you like studying openings where you can memorize lines, in which case uh, you sh could be looking at some. And we'll try to look at some of the theoretical lines. Now, the most logical move in this position and whenever I, I like to study an opening for the first time, I like to start, what happens if both players just make the most logical moves, follow the traditional classical rules? What will happen? So the most logical move, uh, since white didn't directly contest the center, uh, black can. He can play the move e5. So with this move, uh, he's making you know, the move d4 unappealing, and he's taking some control over the center. Now, there's, there is actually kind of a debate already between people that uh, like to play the English, and that's what to do on move two. The most logical move is just develop a knight. How could that be wrong? But another very popular move is the move g3. And white is probably going to end up playing both of these moves anyway, so it does make some sense to, uh, to play them. And understanding the move order here is kind of important. Uh, he's going for a light squared strategy. So he's taking control over some of these light squares in the center, and he's going to use his pieces to uh, contest those squares. So it makes sense to put the bishop on g2. Um, g3 is considered to be slightly more flexible than the uh, knight to c3 lines. One of the reasons is there's a couple side lines that black can play now that he couldn't play if he had played g3. Um, chief among them is probably bishop to b4. And this has a, a very popular reputation. And there's a couple things you can do. You can just defend your knight. Uh, you can play g3, or yeah, play g3 and let him take your knight, and you'll take back with one of these pawns. Those things are fine. Also interesting is the move knight to d5, where against all bishop retreats, and there's about three possible bishop retreats that you could you can imagine, uh, white gets a, a decent position, but it's it's something you you might want to avoid. It's of all the sidelines, it's, it's not a very bad one for black. So if you're considering this for black, you might want to take a look at that, because those are indeed interesting. So for the most part today, we're going to look at the move g3. And I have uh, two recent games that we're going to see. But first, we're going to check out a classic game. And this is the game between uh, Mikhail Botvinnik and Portis Lejos. So here we go. It's, it's enough of that. Yeah, we've got enough of that. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so here we go with our game. It starts with c4, e5, and uh, today we're going to look. <clears throat> this game was played in uh, 1968, so back then this was the most common move. So it's, that's what we have today. And we're going to check out lines in which black just plays for an immediate d5. So what's going to happen is it's going to be a, a Sicilian with reversed colors. So white's going to develop his pieces, knight to f3, g3, bishop g2. And we're going to look at, at the lines 
where black plays the move d5. So this will strike you as a, a Sicilian in reverse. It's an accelerated dragon, only white is up a, a tempo here. So you might think that's a, that's a big plus. Maybe it you know, should be some huge advantage. But this is very playable for black, because even though you got the extra, uh, what, yeah, your opponent has an extra tempo, uh, you won't play as aggressively for an advantage. When white plays the Sicilian, he's trying to get some big advantage out of the opening. But when you play at a tempo down, you're not going to do that. You're going to play a little more conservative, and you're not going to be as aggressive, and you're still going to get a, a decent position in this line. OK, so we know where the bishop's going. And all right, so this move is, is not as popular t today. Usually, black will just develop knights. And uh, once these knights are developed, the main move is actually to play knight to b6. And we'll, we'll see why in just a second here. But uh, bishop e6 was played. So white attacks in the center. Black defends. White castles. And now black retreated. So he was going to retreat anyway. So he could have done it before and then left it unknown where this uh, bishop that started here was going to go into the game. It's probably going to go to e6 anyway, but it's a little bit more flexible just to put the knight on b6. Now, you're, you're not going to be able to do a Yugoslav attack. It's going to be too slow. Even a move like bishop to e7 is going to be a little bit too slow here because now white is castled, and he's up a tempo here, so he has time to get the move d4 in. And this is known to be very good for, for white. He's going to get a very pleasant advantage out of the opening here. For example, if we take, all right, we take back with a knight. We're threatening to inflict doubled pawns. We might be able to get his bishop. So black will, will take. We'll take back. Now, all right, so we got threats all over the place. So he's, he's got to do something so he can take our knight. And we'll, we'll take back. Notice that this is going to fail. Uh, the knight gets out with check. And then the rook moves to safety. So OK, so we'll take here. And now if he castles, you know, because we are attacking this pawn still. So if he castles, protects his pawn. We win a pawn. So there's going to be some position like this. And OK, black's going to have some compensation. He's going to get some pressure going on the queen side. But it shouldn't be enough. So white, white should have sufficient compensation for a, for a pawn. He should be doing quite well. <clears throat> so that's why, in general, in this position, they play knight to b6. OK. <clears throat> in d3, the most normal looking move uh, is actually a bit outdated now. So we'll see in more modern games, people prefer the move a3. And we'll even see a game today where people prefer uh, rook to b1. <clears throat> the idea behind a3 is you play a3, b4, and the bishop's going to go on b2. And this is immediately going to put a lot of pressure in the center, and you're trying to force a concession from black. You want him to play the move f6. <clears throat> so in this game, OK, d3 was played. Um, this game I'm not showing you because it's the latest theory, mostly because uh, it was just a very nice played game by white. And so we'll, we'll check that out. <clears throat> All right, so a3 was played anyway. He's going to play the move b4. And now we're going to look in our next game at when black just castles, which is probably his best move, allowing white to play the move b4. But in this encounter, black decided, I'm going to stop you from playing b4. And he takes time to play the move a5. This does give up some light squares on the queen side. And that's key to our, our strategy as white. So it's not as commonly played anymore. Now they normally wait for a, a pawn to end up on b4, and only then will they sometimes strike with a move like a5. But OK, a5 was played. And now one of the many plans is to start to take control over c5. So the bishop's attacking c5. You can imagine a rook coming to c1. You can imagine the knight maneuvering over to c5, where it'll have a lot of pressure on black's position. And this is what you, you can kind of expect. So black castles. and OK, look, rook, rook c1 is just a normal move. It's probably what I would have played in this position. But it wasn't played in the game. Instead, knight to a4. OK, so he's, he's looking at the c5 square. He's going to put either a knight or a bishop there. And black probably shouldn't take, which is what happened in the game, because he's helping bring the queen to a better square. He should probably prefer something like knight to d5, where, OK, we don't want to give up this guy. So we'll probably go back. And all right, after a move like, like b6 and we, we trade, 
it's not obvious what this guy is doing over here, so he's going to have to move back. Uh, this is truly a weakness, and that's kind of going to be the, in most positions, that's going to be the, the plan for white. One of his key trumps here is the C file. So he's going to try to load up his rooks on, on the C file in almost every line here, and he's going to take aim at, at some of the, the black pawns here. OK, but he traded in the game, and so the queen comes in. Now she's looking at going to some pretty nice squares where she's going to have some, uh, some pressure on the, on the queen side. And black decides, all right, I'm trying to stop you from doing another maneuver that would be very typical. Uh, you might be thinking of bringing your, your knight to c2 and jumping into some of these light squares. Well, if you did that, then I'd be able to trade uh, the, the bishops. That's his big point. He wants to trade the bishop on g2. It's one of white's strongest pieces. Um, <clears throat> so we'll, we'll see what really happened. So he played here. Now he starts to load up on the C file. And all right, you could start with the other rook, but OK, he decided to go with, with rook f to c1. Um, OK, rook e8. Black's plan is he's just going to put his, uh, his, his bishop back. His rook's going to add some extra protection of his e pawn. He's trying to avoid playing a move like f6, like he sometimes might have to do. And on a very good day, he's playing the move e4. Um, but it's not going to happen in this game. He never gets the time. So white begins his plan. Black backs his bishop up. And now we double on the c file. And now black made a horrible blunder. Um, but it's, it's a very instructive one. So he, sh he should try to find any other move than this. He played knight to b8. And not surprisingly, he went backwards, and that's the wrong move. So he's, he's saying, you can take this, but I have a trick. And so it's kind of cool what white did. He, he went in for the trick. He fell for it, which is important. Black's idea was, all right, I'm, now I'm attacking your queen and your rook. So has white fallen into a big trap? Well, this is nice what white did. He, uh, he's, when your opponent kind of has a trap, you realize, OK, he put his, his knight back because he's saying you can't take it. Well, you want to prove him wrong. You don't want to give his, his uh, idea too much respect. You want to say, you're saying I can't, but I'm still going to do it, and I'm going to prove that it's, it is right. And so in this game, he took. So OK, here we're about to get to the, uh, the amazing part of the game, which is why I wanted to show this one first. So at home, you might want to pause your, your screen here for a second, see if you can find the next little combination, and uh, see if you can, you can figure out what white played the next couple moves here. <clears throat> All right. So he decided to take the light squared bishop, which is uh, essential to his plan. He's playing for a light square dominance. So he took the, knight, uh, the, he took the bishop. <clears throat> so this is very common, too, in this opening when they, you know, you want to sacrifice an exchange to get the light squared bishop. Now this guy has a lot of potential. He's on this very wide open diagonal. So a lot of good things can happen for white. You can often get a lot of compensation just by giving up the exchange. Now he didn't play this move. If you just put your knight here, uh, we take your pawn. We have two pawns for the exchange, which is sufficient compensation. But these bishops are looking really nice, in particular the one on g2. Um, there's, <clears throat> this is kind of the dream position for the bishop. There's no pawns on the long diagonal, so he's just going to you know, have a great bishop for the rest of the game. And OK, this guy's not going to be so bad either. He's going to come to one of these nice squares. He's going to do something good. So in the game, uh, black took with a pawn. So again, you might want to stop and try to figure out what white did here. You can play a normal move. OK, rook b7. Maybe this is what, what black intended. And again, white still has a lot of compensation. Uh, these pawns are not very strong, so this bishop is, is quite nice. But he found an even better move. So perhaps you, you found it at home. If not, it's, it's not an easy one to see. He played rooks takes f7. So <clears throat> wow, he's really trying to, to get on this, this long diagonal here. So he's, trying to, he's trying to take control of the light squares. And he's trying to see what will happen if, if the king takes the rook. In the game, he didn't take, and for good reason. If you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you take, now we'll get this check in. Um, OK, you're not going to want to run to either of these, these dark squares, because either way you go, you're at least losing a queen. <clears throat> you know, so you're, you're going to have to, well, OK. You, yeah, you're going to have to like run with your king. 
<clears throat> and all right, things are not going to be pleasant for you. Again, you don't want to run to the dark square because we got these sorts of things. Um, OK, this, this looks really good. <clears throat> you know, you're, you're in a lot of trouble here, especially even if you go back, check, and you're, you're going to get into a, a smothered mate here. So a very typical smothered mate. And there's, there's not a lot else you can do. Let's see, you could try to protect with, with your rook. Um, OK, yeah, at least I'm at least winning this. Probably, if you ask your engine, it'll find some checkmate with some other move like this. But uh, OK, seeing that you can, you can fork the pieces is sufficient to, to refute that line. So he can't take the rook. So he played the move h6, a useful move. Now the knight doesn't have g5 which is going to be one of the, the key squares in these lines. So now he probably can safely take the rook because there's not going to be a, a knight check. So he moves his rook away. And now he's up two pawns for the exchange. And he still has the very pleasant bishop. These pawns are very weak. And it's, OK, so it's hard because uh, it's hard to develop your knight to anywhere useful because anywhere you go, you're going to drop your c pawn. So black attacked the rook. All right, so we gave this check. The king moved into the corner. Now again, you're going to want to pause your video and ask yourself what white played here, because he plays another brilliant move. And we have an audience now, so if they know, they, they, can, they can shout it out. All right. Actually, I don't. OK. How would you teach it? Sure. <laughs> All right, so he left his rook there hanging. He played knight h4. He's coming in to the g6 square here. So <clears throat> all right, black accepted the rook. And now what's going to happen? Well, OK, our queen has this nice long diagonal. So he gave this check. And now, again, a very nice move. Um, this one's not as, as tough to see, but maybe you can find it at home. All right, bishop to e4, setting up discovered threats. So. Black's in a lot of trouble here. Um, all right, he gets his bishop out. What else can you do? And now we have any discovery. We can move the knight anywhere. He keeps the knight in the center of the board. Check. Now, if you go back, let's see. Both, uh, both of these moves look really good. So I, I, you can do either fork. OK, this looks, this looks pretty nice. And then we take here, check. And then I'm getting your queen. So, <clears throat> OK, so that's not good. So instead, he played g6. He's trying to give his king an escape square. So will he be able to run away? Well, OK, so we get our first check in. And now, pause your video again, because there's another really nice move that was played here. So we'll give you a, a second to see if you can, you can find it. And we have multiple people in the audience. So either one of them can, could answer this. I mean, there's certainly more than, than one good move here, but uh, it's the prettiest and most incisive. <clears throat> Bishop takes h6. Another excellent move. And it's nice when you have sort of a masterpiece of a game like this, when you just, every move is, is so pretty. And uh, here, black gave it up. So we'll try to understand. Um, let's see, so you can take our, our bishop, or you can, you can try to run. All right, if you, if you take the bishop, um, we at least have this sort of a thing where we're winning your queen wherever your king goes. So that would, that would be a disaster. Um, so you can't take the bishop. And all right, it's obviously very un unappealing going anywhere else. So OK, you can, try, you can try one of these two squares. And all right, so man, so many, so many good moves. This, is, this looks good. Man, yeah, it looks pretty good. And you don't want to walk into this discovery again. It's the same thing where you're losing your queen. So you might have to play queen takes knight, and you don't want to do that. <clears throat> uh, all right, running up doesn't look very good either. Uh, let's see. So probably here. And you'll go, you'll go somewhere. And I just I got to contain you. All right. And yeah, it's, just, it's not looking good. Um, there we go. So, <clears throat> okay. So for these reasons, you, you can't take and you you can't not take. 
So Black had enough and he gave it up. So a very good instructive game. White got his rooks onto the C file. His opponent dared him to take his C pawn. He accepted that. And he, he really had you know, complete domination of the light squares the entire game. He even sacrificed a rook on the, the F pawn. So I've, I've never really seen that before. It's a really neat idea. Your rook can take an F pawn uh, just to dominate the long diagonal here. So <clears throat> an excellent game. So now we're going to move on to some more recent games. And one of our viewers had said, uh, I just checked it this morning. I, I just had intended to do it all from White's perspective. But uh, night 11, you said, I want to see it uh, something from Black's perspective. So I'm going to show a good game from Black playing the same opening. And it is kind of a warning to White. White makes a, a pretty big mistake that's very common. So I want to go over that so we know exactly what not to do when we're playing this opening. Um, the, the player with white pieces in this game gets the prize for the coolest name. It's uh, Reed's, Reed's Knees. Reed's Knees. So all right, that's a pretty cool name. And uh, he was playing Karyakin. Karyakin obviously is a 2700 super grandmaster. So he was able to win this game um, against an opponent you've never heard of. We're going to flip the board because White played so bad, we're going to get him as far away from us as possible. So we're going to look at this one from Black's perspective for a change. All right. So here's the beginning of our opening. Let's see what uh, was chosen in this game. This game started with knight c3, another very possible way. And uh, Black just goes right for the reverse Sicilian. The e pawn is attacked, so it's defended. And after g6, we get the move d5. So here we go again. This is our, our position from before. We'll fiend shadow our bishop. Black's immediate plan is, is just to get developed. Um, in the last game, we saw like bishop e6. That had been played a little bit earlier. But in this case, he just retreats the bishop. He knows he's going to do it anyway. So why not just get it out of the way? Castles, bishop e7. And now white's going to make a decision. Is he going to play d3? Is he going to play a3? Well, in this game, he decided to go d3. OK, very sensible. So we castle. And now he's beginning his plan. So in the other game, we saw black play the move a5 and stop white from his b4 idea. But in this game, Karyakin just lets him do it. And uh, you'll see why in just a second. He just develops his bishop, right? OK. And now, with, once they've played b4, now you can play the move a5. And so you have a lot of pressure here, and you're kind of coaxing them to come in to the b5 square. And you're, you're trying to say, OK, well, now that that pawn's there, you're not going to be able to put a knight on the b5. So that's going to be advantageous to black. But you might be thinking, hey, this knight is attacked. And if this knight moves, this pawn is going to be hanging. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> all right, so the first question we should probably ask is, well, what happens if black takes this pawn? If black takes, he's actually going to be in a lot of trouble here. Uh, the move to play is bishop to f6, a very nice diagonal, just an awesome bishop. So you don't have any time to like, retreat your knight, because you would take here, check, and then you'd notice that this knight is hanging. So that would be a big problem. So you might have to play a move like f4. And now white has a really nice move, knight to b3, with a threat that you see and a threat that you don't see. You see that your rook is attacked. But what's the threat that you don't see? So black actually has a threat that's even greater than uh, just taking the rook. So if you play you know, a move, you just save your rook, you're going you're gonna to be shocked by, by his next move here. And that's queen d4, check, and the knight is hanging, so you win a piece. So all right, you'd have to defend against that. That's the greatest threat. And all right, this looks kind of like a mess for white. He moved some of his pawns on the king side. You're, you want an exchange, so. so that would be a big mistake. But instead, he made another mistake. Probably you should just bring your knight back to d2. Or at least you know, play rook b1, try to take control. Here's a very important light square, the b3 square, which is uh, kind of crucial to black's plans a lot of the time. So the rook is, is often very good on b1 because it, it controls b3. And all right, you might not want to trade the knights. If you put, play knight d2, then in the future you're going to play you know, e3, you're going to kick the knight away. <clears throat> um, but he, he took the knight. And this is a, is a big positional mistake. 
And it, it happens all the time. With this pawn on d4, now white's entire kingside, or yes, kingside pawns are really cramped. You're never going to be able to move your e-pawn without creating even more weaknesses, because wherever it goes, we're going to take it, and then your d-pawn is going to be weak. Also now, all right, at some point, we're going to bring our rook over, and we're going to put pressure along the e-file, and now we have a weakness that we can target. OK, so immediately, we're on your knight. So the knight went to a4. All right, the last game, we saw somebody take, but that only helps white bring his piece in. Uh, we notice this bishop, too, is, is exerting some pressure. So black seeks to trade it off. This does, however, give white the opportunity to uh, double black's pawns. So that was taken. And uh, OK, now is this, how bad is this? Well, it's not so bad. White didn't crash through on the queen side. He has no queen side play, which is where he's trying to play. Obviously, our, our three on two isn't ever going to be able to create a passer. But we'll notice uh, there is a, a weakness on the queen side that black can attack. And we'll check that out in just a second. So bishop b2. And all right. So black managed to get rid of the English bishop. A real big success for him. And uh, after check, all right, he improves his queen. The king drops back. Now a very nice move. Obviously, we can just take this pawn. But uh, OK, we wouldn't want to drop our, our D pawn here. It's, it's one of the strongest pawns we got. So we found a, a really good move. Not, not too hard, but uh, if you want to pause and just, just find a nice, easy move here. All right, it's, uh, it's A4. The plan is to just go attack this weakness. And now you can't defend it. So black's just going to go, and he's going to take your B pawn. And there's, there's nothing you can do about it. So all right, he moves his queen. He's going to try to use the C file. This is kind of key to his plan. One of these rooks is going to come over to the C file. But now we do have time to attack his pawn. In comes a rook. We take the pawn. Now, after this move, you might be thinking, well, wait a minute. Is white you know, getting back into this? Um, OK, this, this rook looks pretty good. It's forking two of our pawns. But black has a, a good move here. He can just defend the most important pawn. And now, tactically, white can't take this a-pawn. So we'll see if uh, we can find it in the audience, see if you can find it at home. What, uh, what move would black play here? Hopefully, you, you found it at home. All right, queen to b3, uh, four king two pieces. So this would be big trouble for, for white. So the a pawn is immune. We can't, we can't take it yet. So instead, he attacks it again. Now we could you know, try to defend it somehow. But he comes up with another nice move. Um, again, the a pawn is immune in another position here, which is kind of cool. Because now what will happen if we take with a rook? Go ahead and see if you can, uh, you can find it at home. All right. Uh, b5 would trap the rook. Notice there, there's no escaping. Uh, your rook just gets trapped. So again, you, you can't take the pawn. All right. So white gets everything he's got going on the c file. Um, again, we could probably tactically leave our a pawn hanging. But uh, OK, he decides, all right, now's the time. I'm just I'm going to defend my pawn. Also, this queen might be thinking, OK, at some point, maybe I'm going to swing over to the king side, get a king side attack going. Because you'll notice it's really hard for white to get his pieces over to the defense of his king. So at some point here, he's going to get serious about how is he going to you know, defend over there. And notice, OK, for the moment, a3 is hanging. So white made a really sad move. He brought his rook back. So off of the open file, back to the a file, OK. And here black goes on the, uh, the king side, h5. All right, so everybody is stuck over on the queen side. Let's try to get something going on the king side. And uh, all right, he didn't want to allow black to make such moves. Maybe he's going to play h4, h3, uh, get some pressure here. You don't have your, your bishop, so all right. So white played h4 himself. Now you can probably do something really crazy like g5 here. But it wasn't played. Um, <clears throat> the point is, OK, if you take, I'm playing h4. And all right, you probably don't want to let my, my queen in here at some point. 
but also it, it, you can go a lot slower as black. You don't have to go crazy. Do the computer lines, because no matter what you're going to do in this position, you're going to be better for a long, long time. And we'll notice in this game, Karyakin just moves around, and that's what uh, you know, all the best grandmasters do. They make a thousand moves, doing nothing, just slowly improving stuff, and then they strike when you least expect it. So, all right, rookie eight. Finally, we got some pressure here going on the e-pawn. The e so, all right, white defends it a second time. And now, um, again, g5 is possible. But rook e5 was played. Um, OK, so now this rook has possibilities. Sometimes if you do play a move like g5, maybe the rook will be able to swing over for an attack. But maybe also it's just going to go to d5, protect this pawn for a third time so that some of our pieces could move, so our queen could move away from the defense of the pawn, the bishop could move away. And uh, that's indeed what happened. So now that this guy's defended three times, we can move some of our, our other pieces. So here we go. First, he just slowly improves his king. All right, and then there's a lot of, lot of to and throw. He can uh, obviously start thinking about you know, moves like just really bringing his, his king in, or his queen in. But, uh, but OK, he went to the queen side, which is also decent. He's always going to be better. White can do nothing. You just sit and you wait, and you hope you never get checkmated. So we'll see, we'll see if it works. <clears throat> um, all right, so he defends his bishop. And now his pieces start to remaneuver. The bishop you know, is on his way to e5. He'll protect it from there. And then he's going to bring you know, some of his pieces back. And he's going to get them closer to the king side. Because while c5 is nice, you're, you're blocking the c file. Uh, it is time to start getting this guy over here. Maybe you're thinking about someday I'll take on g3, especially if my, my queen could jump over there quickly. That would be a, a realistic sacrifice. So he remaneuvered his bishop. So now his bishop has potential to sack on the king side. Back comes the queen. And now white really needs to play a move like king g2, stopping the queen from ever making a move uh, like queen h3. Because once the queen gets to h3, there's going to be a lot of potential for sacrifices. Black is going to have a way to make inroads to the, to the king. And OK, this rook is also going to be very fast to come in and, and sometimes help in a checkmating attack. And white made a, a really big blunder here. Uh, rook c8, which just allowed queen h3. And the, the sad part is you can't even defend your pawns like this, because hopefully you see it at home. Uh, the queen would make a very long retreat, and it would take your rook. So all right, so there's nothing to be done about that. So he makes some other move, and now this, this sacrifice works. So again, there's no, there's no time to take this rook, because you're going to get checkmated. So that's a pretty, pretty powerful attack we got going on. <clears throat> So instead he took, and now it's, it's almost over here. Uh, check. All right, if you go this way, you get checkmated immediately. So he went the other way. Though this is still very bad. And after queen h4, he resigned. All right, we can try to see the checkmate. It's, uh, it's looking pretty good for these two pieces. Um, so if the game continued, maybe king g2. And all right, let's get, let's get this guy into the game. Now you have to, to pick a square. Um, this one is, is pretty easy. OK, this is one, one way to checkmate. <clears throat> Let's see, if we go the other way, mm, probably a lot of ways. <clears throat> All right, this is looking pretty good. Um, all right, what's the fastest way? <clears throat> so maybe. We can find the fastest way, but okay. But I mean, this something like this is going to be checkmate in a few moves. So there might be faster, but uh, okay. But with two heavy pieces wide open and nobody to defend on the king side, you're you're going to get checkmated here. So <clears throat> yeah. So the big mistake in this game <clears throat> was uh, if we can go back a long ways here. <clears throat> yeah, knight takes d4. This was a very bad move. So this is something you really want to avoid with the white pieces. The pawn on d4 is just too strong. Uh, you get cramped on the king side. You, it's really hard to defend. You didn't get any counterplay on the queen side. And OK, black got to move around as much as he wanted to, put his pieces in all the right places, and then launched a successful attack on the king. So hopefully, we'll never play that move in our, in our games. And it pops up not just in this opening. It pops up in uh, quite a lot of openings. <clears throat> But now we're going to move on to uh, a very recent game. It was it just played in the, uh, the last Millionaire Tournament. 
that we had in, in Vegas this year. So this was a game between Nakamura and uh, America's youngest grandmaster, Sam Sevian, who last August, 2014, he, uh, he got his, his rating all the way up to 2,500, which was, he already had his three norms, and he did that right here in St. Louis. So we're, we're kind of proud of that. And we'll check out a game between these two. And uh, they got to our, our opening here. We've seen all of these moves. Uh, okay, so ag again, most common things that we've seen. We've seen D3. Um, we've talked a little bit about A3. That's an idea too. Here, Nakamura played uh, the third most common. It's kind of a rare move, but it, it's, a, it's a nice one. I quite like this idea. Rook B1, uh, he's going to try to play the move B4. He's going to try to make this work tactically without having to play the move A3, which is a, it's a really nice idea because, okay, the rook is usually good on B1. We've seen it in this, in this uh, opening. You know, controls some, some key squares like B3. So we'll see what happens uh, when we play this move. So he castled, and now B4. So, all right, this works tactically. There are two pieces attacking our pawn, but you'll notice uh, sometimes we're going to deflect his knight away. We'd be able to take a central pawn. So, I mean, taking with the bishop is, is kind of just right out because uh, we would get to, to trade you know, a side pawn for a central pawn, so that's a, a small achievement for us. If you just take the knight, okay, we take your, your bishop. Um, and you don't have anything fancy like taking my knight first because now I take here and all right, you're going you're gonna to end up with doubled pawns. So this is not going to be good. This is just terrible because all right, this guy is a monster. <clears throat> and uh, all right, our audience just doubled. All right, and got a lot higher rated. I love it. <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay, so this position would just, just be terrible. So there's, there's no way you could take with the bishop. Um, you might want to consider taking with the knight. Again, okay, this is a, a small strategic success for white. He gets to take a central pawn, trade it for a side pawn. Not that it's you know, going to be just super easy. He didn't get quite as much as he did in the other line. But all right, this would just be a, a nice small victory for white. So uh, the most common move is to play a6, just prevent white from doing any ideas he might have with b5. But all right, in this position, Sam played kind of a, a typical Sam Sevian move. He played the move e4. So he's saying, you can have my e-pawn, but only under my terms. So now he, when he takes, uh, he could consider taking back right away. But this was his idea. He's getting some of his pieces out as quickly as possible. So now there's a, a threat to the knight. And uh, all right, so you can't really move the knight because uh, of the pin here. So white voluntarily goes into a pin. <clears throat> now he's hoping for something like this. This would be nice for him because now he has a little trick. It uh, looks kind of like, okay, the queen's kind of trapped. And if she moves away, maybe we'll get to take the knight. But we have this tiny trick, check. And then uh, we, we pick up this bishop. And that would get us out of our pin and, and solve a lot of our problems. <clears throat> so instead, Sam took with the bishop, the point being now this trick is unavailable um, because we'll just take back with the queen and now the bishop's protected. So we no longer have that trick to get out of the pin. Instead, Naka plays the move a3, a very useful move. Uh, he's taken the, the b4 square away because as soon as the bishop retreats somewhere, Black would, would really love to, to get a knight in here and attack the queen, because if the queen has to move, uh, okay, it's going to be hard to defend the knight. So, <clears throat> all right, a very, very useful move, a3. And now, uh, another nice move here. He would kind of like to, uh, to go harass this bishop, but... <laughs> but, uh, okay, he's kind of worried about knight to d4. That's a pretty, pretty serious threat here. So, e3. Now he's, he's taking control over the d4 square. So now uh, Sam understands knight h4 is coming, and he prepared a retreat for his bishop. So that was his plan. He's trying to keep the pin. And uh, OK, so this is nice. You have a pin. But now Hikaru has a, a really nice plan of trying to make this bishop a really bad piece. So at home, you might want to pause and think about it for a second. What's, uh, what's the plan here for white? Because the plan he comes up with is quite nice, and it begins Oops, f4. The point is, you're playing f5, and you're shutting the bishop out. So after a move like f5, OK, you're, you know, you're, your bishop's not going to be a good piece. So uh, Sam's contemplating giving up the dark squared bishop for the knight 
and winning a pawn. It's, uh, it's very risky. And Hikaru lets him have the opportunity. And Sam's not the kind of person that likes to just you know, take a pawn and then try to defend forever. He's usually not going to accept such a thing. And he probably doesn't want to give away his, his dark squared bishop. <clears throat> um, in such a position, let's just pretend we, we win this pawn. Well, with the, the dark squared bishop's gone, yeah, you're, you're up a pawn. Uh, you have given my knight access to c5, which will cause you some headaches. Also, uh, and I'm getting serious about attacking your king. I'm bringing the rook to b2, where it's going to have a huge amount of scope. I'm bringing the rook to f4. Maybe I'll swing my other rook in. At some times, OK, maybe I'll be able to play a move like f6. And uh, my attack is going to be very strong. So Sam recognized this, and uh, he did not go in for the, the pawn. <clears throat> Instead, he played all right, knight e5. <clears throat> OK, so he's, he's thinking, where's this, where's this knight going to go? And now, uh, all right, we do, we do have a lot of pressure here. We want to kick that knight away. <clears throat> um, so okay, so first he, he develops with a tempo. This was the knight's, the knight's point, yeah, and then uh, F, F6. So this is not a very pretty picture. So please put your cameras away. That's just, <clears throat> okay, strategically that's, that's just terrible. Uh, it's a horrible move to, to have to make. So he should have done anything but that. All right. <clears throat> OK, so here comes his pawn. He's going to kick this knight away. If the knight moves away, then, then sometimes you're going to have some, some trouble defending your, your b-pawn. <clears throat> All right, this was his point. The knight is in time to defend the a5 square. It also comes with a tempo on the bishop. Uh, this is an excellent attacking piece, so we really don't want to give up our bishop for no reason. So we get to come into d4. All right, a very, very nice square. Um, <clears throat> All right. And yeah, he was thinking there might be, be some tactics involved with uh, a5, so he just prevented it himself. And now, yeah, now his pieces are just coming alive. Uh, you're, there's a lot of serious problems. OK, this knight is looking at some, some very serious squares. And black is already in, in a lot of trouble. So yeah, and this is just kind of the problem. All right, he has this really bad piece. And now he's going to start losing some material here. So he felt obliged to, to give up the bishop. Um, there's other ways to lose material, but OK. You still have the same problems. Um, yeah, so I'm attacking all of your stuff. <clears throat> he decides to save the rook, which makes sense. Um, and he took the knight here. You don't have to do that. You can just immediately take the b-pawn and keep the pieces on. But Hikaru's a very practical player when he has a winning position. He's, uh, <clears throat> he's thinking, the more pieces I trade, the better it's going to be for me, because it's kind of like you're playing without this bishop over here. So if I keep trading everything, eventually we're going to get to some position where, OK, I have one piece left, and you're, you have one piece that'll never move. So trading pieces is it's good for him. Also, not trading pieces is good for him, because his pieces are really good. So <clears throat> all right, not, not necessary, but practical. And now he goes ahead, and he, he grabs the pawn. So he snatched up a pawn. Um, all right, he brings his, his bishop back. Uh, <clears throat> All right, now you just, it's, it's getting hard to, to move some of his stuff here. And OK, white has a lot of plans. You know, he's just going like, to improve his pieces, bring all of his pieces into the game. So I wasn't joking. Here he comes. The rook's coming in. Uh, the knight is, a, or the queen is about to jump into a3. And uh, you actually have a cute move here. So you might want to pause it and see if you can find uh, what the computer thinks is, is the best move. And it's the cutest. So uh, perhaps you found it. Well, you can actually play a move like rook to d5. Uh, the cue point is, OK, you can't take my rook because you drop yours. And now you're, you know, you're in a huge amount of trouble. So I mean, OK, that's, that's game over. Um, and then the other point is, well, I'm just going to go take your pawn. And all right, what are you going to do about that? It's, it's getting tough. <clears throat> but uh, he played, made a practical decision. He decided, all right, I'll trade the queens. It does come at the cost of some structural weakness. Um, now, OK, black can, on a very good day, have time to go and attack some of these pawns. <clears throat> but again, if you just keep trading pieces, black's going to be ended up with just this guy left. And all of white's pieces are going to be better than that bishop. <clears throat> all right, now he goes for this pawn. <clears throat> and white doesn't defend his pawn. And this is kind of something I like to teach to all of my students. You want to ignore all of your opponent's threats. You want to find some way to create an even greater threat than uh, you know, the, what, they're, what they're threatening. So white just calmly doubles up. 
Uh, we got some threats here. Our rook is rook is coming in, <clears throat> and all right, black's in a lot of trouble. And it's funny he just went back, thinking that okay he has to go and defend this rank. If he takes this pawn, king f2, and now he's in a, in a lot of trouble. Uh, you can be really greedy, but now your rook is just totally out of the picture. Um, so some combination of these rooks checks and you know the knights knights jumping in is just going to be kind of crushing. So if we give this check, for example, the pawn here is a huge headache for black because now it's, it's like impossible to guard your back rank. <clears throat> so, and also you're not in time to not take the pawn because, okay, still the same thing. I'm, uh, I'm getting you here with, uh, with some threats. So you got to really worry about your, your back rank. Um, so I guess he realized, it was kind of silly, you know, he moved his rook and then he moved it back realizing, okay, he has to go protect his back rank. He didn't even have time to take the pawn. <clears throat> so he admits that he, uh, he made a mistake. And now, all right, let's kick this knight again because the knight doesn't have anywhere good to go. He defended his back rank. Now the knight's got to make a tough decision. The only safe squares are not very desirable. <clears throat> so the computer thinks the best move is to put this guy in the corner. Because I guess when he went to school, he was really bad, and he sat in the corner a lot. Now these guys do not make a good impression, because you had a lot of pieces now that can't move, so you're going to be in, in huge trouble in a second. Um, realizing that, all right, you put the, the knight in the corner, he's never getting out. You're playing without two of your pieces. <clears throat> he says, well, I got to play knight to c8. Even if it's not the best move, I got to do that. But <clears throat> OK, now you know maybe the knight's thinking about coming in, so he just stops that. Rook on the seventh. You're never, you're never coming in here. And uh, well, it's, it's really hard to move if you're black. So attack the bishop. Of course, we're not going to let you take our bishop. Um, and again, I mean, your knight's not doing anything. He's not coming to these squares. White has him under control. Uh, he just he defends his, his pawn for the moment. At some point, you know, we're going to think about just bringing our bishop in and kicking the rook away. But he gave this check first. Um, and the point is, in this position, it's really hard to move. And it was so hard to make a move in this position that Sam resigned. The threat of a uh, bishop b7 is, is just crushing. You can't move any of your pieces. It's almost Zug's win. It's, you know, I wouldn't want to make a legal move here either because it's just, you're just getting, getting crushed. So an excellent game by Hikaru. Um, the idea with rook b1 early on is a really excellent idea. The point is just to play b4 tactically. And all right, he just showed uh, a real nice move. F4 was really nice, F4, F5, blocking in one of uh, the bishops for black. And he went on to win a, a really great game. So that's one idea of how to play the, uh, the English. It's uh, how you can play against the, uh, the reverse Sicilian. So hopefully you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, send me some feedback. Uh, maybe I'll pick your opening next week. Thanks a lot. <laughs>